Welcome back, watch people. Lots to get through today. I'm gonna to do some questions and answers. We haven't done any Q and A's for quite some time. Um, there's gonna be some reaction to the last video that I made about the authorized dealer um, who emailed his customer and told him that he was no longer welcome um, in the store to buy any more watches um, and a few other bits and pieces to get through um, as well. Let's start off with a question that came in from Jonathan. I've got so many bits of paper here guys so you're gonna have to bear with me today. Jonathan says, Paul, why don't dealers rent or lease watches? After all, you can rent a car or even a Ferrari so why not a Rolex watch? Um, the thing is, Jonathan, that is something that I've not looked into because I was thinking about potentially doing it from a business perspective, but it's quite an obvious thing. It is a commodity that you could very easily lease or rent and probably for a good amount of money, it would be a nice little business to be in. The reason that you don't see people renting um, high-end watches, um, and the only person that I can recall um, advertising that they do, was someone that producer Michael had on his show. Um, they were out in the United States and they were renting Richard Mills, blinged out Rolex, APs, Pateks, etc. I don't know if they're still in business, don't know how they got along or what pitfalls they came across. But for me at least, um, you know, I'm quite a level-headed person. I'm a man of the world and I've seen the problems that the watch business and the watch industry and just human nature can bring. Um, I don't see it working, Jonathan. I mean, look, I wrote a few notes down here um, for the benefit of the video. Insurance issues for a start. Who's gonna wanna insure anyone that's uh, lending Rolex watches out to the general public. Insurance would be impossible to get or almost impossible. Um, unfortunately, like it or not, the type of people that uh, a renting offer or a leasing offer would um, attract, i.e. the scammers, on nine out of 10 occasions, I think, um, it'd be too dangerous. I mean, for every one genuine inquiry you had from someone that say, wants to take a watch on holiday for a week or get married at the weekend, you know, you get 10 or 20 people trying to come along, take a watch um, on a so-called lease and then just disappear into the night sky with it. Um, getting a watch back as well could prove a real issue if the customer decides that he's just not gonna return the watch for whatever reason. I mean, even legally, the costs involved in getting that watch back could, eventually it could outweigh the cost of the watch itself, depending on what you were loaning and leasing. I mean. Uh, look, there are benefits, aren't there? I mean, if you had 10 or 20 watches out and you was guaranteeing that a, a payment arrived every month for them, what a cracking living. So it's an obvious business for someone to get into, but obviously anyone <clears throat> like myself with the capabilities of getting into that business have clearly looked at it and, and written it off. I mean, look, you'd never get the police involved if, if someone decided they just weren't gonna bring that watch back. What will be the point, point in calling the police? They don't even investigate when you've been bashed over the head and beaten up for your watch. So they're certainly not gonna be very keen on going round to see someone who you tell them you've actually loaned a Rolex watch in return for financial gain. So that's that's out the question. Um, what would the watch come back like? Would it be damaged? Who's gonna put, oh, it's, a, it's, it's a minefield of problems, Jonathan. Um, and I'm afraid I can't ever see that one happening. Um, just a quick shout out to my good friend, Usheen over at the Timeless Watch channel. Um, I watched half of a video that he's just uploaded. I'm gonna try and watch the other half tonight, buying a watch online. Um, the first half that I watched at least was full of proper information, genuine watch people's information. It's a must view, no fluff, no guff, just proper, proper info from Usheen over at the Timeless Watch channel. If you haven't seen that video, guys, it's well worth looking at. So the next one comes in from Brendan Wyatt, and Brendan's uh, a regular contributor to uh, my channel. Brendan says, uh, he's talking about my last video here, um, where I told you the story about an authorised dealer in Croydon in South London that uh, realised that one of their customers was selling a Rolex watch on eBay. I'm sure you've seen the video. If you haven't, go and have a look at it. But Brendan in the AD's defence says, Paul, Rolex themselves monitor the auction sites and the ADs risk losing their dealerships if they repeatedly sell watches that immediately turn up for sale. So the authorised dealers need to look proactive to Rolex. Now, Brendan, I've actually got no doubt that you're probably right on that, uh, on that point. I am not convinced that it's the individual authorised dealers sitting there going through eBay and Chrono 24 with a magnifying glass trying to see parts of serial numbers on watches that are advertised for sale. I think that's all a bit sad, if I'm honest. Um, but look, at the end of the day, they're 
all Rolex, if you like, uh, and they're going to have to sleep in the same bed that they all make together, aren't they, really? And whilst I agree with you, Brendan, um, at the end of the day, I think it's a bad practice, whether it's from upstairs at Rolex, from in the mid rooms at Rolex, or whether it's actually at the authorised dealerships individually. I think they're pretty much all in it together, mate. Um, and at the end of the day, I'm not very happy about this situation. And there's, this leads on to something else I'm going to come at or, and come to towards the end of the video. I'm not very happy with Rolex at the moment and all this snobbery and all this, you know, nosiness, etc. that's going around. Um, if they want to get involved in something that's really worthwhile, I'll tell them exactly what that is. And it's going to benefit every single one of you guys out there. But I don't think they're interested in benefiting anyone else other than themselves. And that's the problem that I've got at the moment but we'll come to that a little bit later uh jerry from manhattan says paul have really enjoyed the recent collaboration videos please can you do some more jerry oh, i'm happy to do collaboration videos with pretty much almost anyone as long as they've been decent and are sensible people if there are any other watch youtubers out there that would like to do a collab with me just get in touch and uh and we'll get it going gareth from dubai said what happened to the proposed aventi review I was really looking forward to that and an honest and unbiased review of their watches. Um, Gareth, it's a simple case of, is that I'm in the queue? I think I'm behind Watchfinder, so that's not too sad, is it? Um, but at the end of the day, um, that watch is passed along through uh, one hand to the next for people to review, and I'm still a couple of three down the line, I think. But I will be doing that as soon as that watch arrives with me. Sean Smith says, I've been trying to buy a watch since we came out of lockdown. Nobody seems to have much, if anything, in stock. I thought it would be easier to buy it after lockdown as the country goes into recession. Well, Sean, I'm not sure what recession you're seeing, my friend, because I'm not seeing one, at least um, from the business world, as it were. Um, everyone I know in business, whether it be cars, watches, boats, motorcycles, it doesn't matter, real estate, property, everyone is selling out of everything. There's a lot of people out here right now, they're spending their savings because they've come out of a three, four month lockdown thinking, what the hell, you only live once, so I'm gonna buy what I want and I'm gonna live my life and enjoy it, which I have, I, you know, you know my views on that, I think it's a good thing. Um, the other thing is, I think there's a lot of people spending bounce back money. Sean, there's no recession that I can see at the moment, especially in the watch world. Now, whether that's going to change in a year or 18 months, I don't know. I'm not an economic um, guru. I can't predict how the economy is going to be in a year or 18 months' time. But right now, at least, there's a big shortage of quality watches. All the dealer friends that I know are finding it relatively hard to find watches. Um, the public don't really appear to be selling. So at the moment, or for the moment at least, I only see price is really gradually creeping up again rather than going down now going back to that previous video that i made because i'm what i'm trying to do is guys i'm trying to um, play devil's advocate and i'm trying to be fair to the authorized dealers i'm trying to you know give them a, a fair crack at a whip and by the way if any of you have got good positive stories about particular ad's please tell me or feel free to drop them in the comment section below because you know if there are authorized dealers out there that deserve a good mention and a good shout because they've been behaving themselves impeccably and their service is fantastic let me know i'll give them i'll be happy to give them credit um martin norden said maybe they are trying to find flippers and stop the flipper buying watches only to sell on and make a profit denying other prospective owners the opportunity to buy and own this watch. If this is the reason, then I'm happy with the store's actions. Please don't forget, the store can choose to sell to whom it wants. Now, Martin, thanks for that. Um, and uh, I'm not picking on your message for any other reason other than that it was such a good one that it picks up a lot of points that I actually want to tackle um, and have a kind of friendly debate with you about and anyone else that wants to to watch this look as i said earlier on in the video there's something going on at the moment with rolex that really bothers me it's their attitude um particularly the authorized dealers now let me just go back to your uh, message once again um maybe they're trying to find the flippers and stop the flipper from buying what is only to sell and make a profit well look the thing is martin what the hell has that got to do with rolex haven't they got anything better to do a multi-billion pound organization haven't they got anything better to do with their staff and their time and their resources than to scour eBay 
with an eyeglass trying to spot the odd individual who might make a few hundred quid or even a few thousand on a piece of property that doesn't belong to them. They've sold it. It's not their business mind. That's the, this is the thing. When was the last time that you sold something and then started checking up on the new owner to see what they were doing, it, doing with it or how much they sold it for? It's none of your goddamn business. Once you've sold it, you sold it. And if Rolex have got, and this is the point, this is the big point, guys. This is where I want you to stay with me on this one. If Rolex have got staff to spare, um, to start looking through eBay and Chrono24, if they've got the time and the resources, why don't they put it back into the lost and stolen register that they stopped in 2011? Now, I hope you'll forgive me for reading an article that I wrote for the watch industry uh, about four or five years ago. Um, and it's not very long, so I hope you'll bear with me while I read it. But this is why it annoys me that Rolex can find time to get their authorised dealers to follow up good honest individuals who just want to sell their own property. It's none of their business. So this is the article I wrote about the lost and stolen register. Years ago, I could send a fax to Rolex with a list of serial numbers taken from watches that I wanted to purchase. Within an hour or so, a fax would be returned to me from Rolex stating that all the serial numbers were clear on their lost and stolen register, which in turn cleared me to go ahead with the purchase. What a great service from a world-class company. Copies of that fax could then be supplied to the next owner, offering them assurance that their watch had never been the subject of a theft or a dodgy insurance claim or a loss. In their wisdom, and for reasons only known to themselves, Rolex suddenly stopped offering this service in me from memory around 2011. Time really flies, is it really nine years ago? And they stopped this to both the trade and the general public. Now at first we thought the cessation was only going to be temporary whilst Rolex moved their service centre from Bexley to West Malin. The weeks quickly turned into months and it started to become clear that the lost and stolen service had gone and probably forever. Now, there are a number of theories why Rolex stopped offering this service. The most popular belief is that it cost a lot of money. The running cost became too high. But I've never subscribed to that theory and I'll tell you for why. As far as I'm aware at least, and I used to deal with these people on a daily basis, there were only two employees working at the lost and stolen Rolex register over the years, I've put hundreds, if not thousands, of serial numbers through the Rolex system, and I only ever dealt with the same two ladies during all of that period. It didn't seem to be a huge department to me at all. Tapping a serial number into a computer doesn't take a rocket scientist, nor does it require a lot of man or woman power. So for a company the size of Rolex, this just doesn't make sense at all to me. Besides, if finances were an issue, even if they charged callers just one pound a time, it would earn Rolex a small fortune. But I believe the reasons behind the death of the lost and stolen register are a little bit more sinister. There's little doubt in my mind that Rolex's decision was taken in an attempt to push Rolex buyers through the door of the authorised dealers and away from the independents or the private sellers to encourage the public to buy brand new rather than used, or should I say rather to discourage the public from buying used. I guess you could say, well, who can blame them? But if my theory is correct, that's a very short-sighted attitude. Certainly not one fitting of a world-class brand that prides itself in being amongst the very, very best. I mean, let's get this right. Rolex are really only interested in two things. One, selling brand new watches, and two, servicing old ones. That's how they make their money, period. Um, the article goes on, and I've nearly got to the end now, guys, so please bear with me. But there's a very strong flip side to this argument. In ceasing the lost and stolen register, you could say Rolex are in danger of diluting the value of a pre-owned Rolex watch, and therefore, at the same time, diluting their own brand. Um, now, in addition to that, I want to do a 2020 um, input into what I'm saying here as well. They're also putting, potentially putting people's lives at risk because without the lost and stolen register, the thieves out there, 
know that the chances of their watch or their stolen watch being discovered are a lot less. We desperately need that lost and stolen register back. After all, the value of a new Rolex is what it is only because of the value of a pre-owned one and vice versa. It's a perpetuating cycle and neither market should be compromised. These days, dealers like myself participate in extreme due diligence to ensure that all the watches we buy are clean and come from an absolutely impeccable source. Now, finally, um, at the end of this, I'll just cut this bit short now. Five years after the end of the lost and stolen register, because I wrote this a few years ago, um, there's no move to reinstate it. So guys, I think you can probably see where I'm going with this. Is look, at the end of the day, what bugs me with Rolex a bit is that they've got time to go through eBay and Chrono24 and pick on individual private sellers and all this nonsense about it helping to stop the flipping. Flipping will only stop when authorized dealers across the country fulfill their genuine waiting lists and do away with all this preferred client nonsense and you've got to buy 10 Breitlings before you can buy a Datejust or a Daytona. My advice to you out there is this, if you're authorized dealer anywhere in the world, suggest to you that you've got to buy a load of stuff that you don't want before you can get on the list to buy a Rolex watch, say thank you very much, I'm disgusted with that, and walk out and let them get on with it, right? I mean, look, you're not losing anything because at the end of the day, you ain't gonna get sold a watch in the first place. If, a, if an authorized dealer says to you, look, you need to be buying other watches before I can sell you a Rolex, he's never gonna sell you a Rolex in the first place. And if Rolex have got time to be a nosy parker, um, is the best polite way I can think of it. If Rolex have got the time to be putting their nose into other people's businesses, why don't they put that time and effort into something that would really genuinely help you and me and every other watch enthusiast out there? Because I know one thing, if I go out this afternoon and one of my Rolex watches is stolen from me, the chances of me ever getting it back are slim, slim to none. And the reason that they're slim to none is because Rolex no longer operate a lost and stolen register. They do operate it, but only for the benefit of themselves, when actually they should be doing it for the benefit of their own people who buy and support their brand. Guys, that's it for today. As always, let me know what you think. One last thing before I go, as I said to you, I will be naming um, the authorized dealership in the UK at least that has been voted on my channel by my viewers as the worst. Be disgusting behavior. Um, I've got one, two, three, four, five quick bullet points and I'll give you a quick clue of what's coming up. These are all from emails. At no stage was I shown or told how to set my new watch, how it worked or how I should look after it. I went in expecting a five star customer experience and came out feeling like I'd just walked out of a tobacconist and bought a packet of cigarettes. Um, the next one, staff were rude and arrogant, didn't want to know me. The next one was told that without a purchase history, I had no chance of buying a Rolex sports watch. The next one was asked to purchase items I didn't want just to get me on a waiting list. And finally, the staff are arrogant. That's just a selection. That's just a small selection of what's coming up um, in the next week or two when I reveal who my viewers have voted the rudest, most arrogant, um, <laughs> self-important, Rolex authorized dealership in the country. I've had one or two emails about some other authorized dealers, but nothing that is really worth picking up on. I don't wanna just pick on people for the sake of it, but this particular branch, this particular branch is causing um, some real ripples amongst their customers. Uh, and in, in a video coming very shortly, I'm gonna tell you all about that and I'm gonna reveal who it is. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and I'll speak to you again soon.